looks like it is about that time. Welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for our monthly Indigenous film series. My name is Celine Figueroa and I am with the Denver Museum of Nature and Science and I will be your virtual host this evening. My role is mostly behind the scenes. The Denver Museum of Nature and Science is pleased to partner with the International Institute for Indigenous Resource Management and the Denver American Indian Commission to present Indigenous film. As you watch tonight's film, go ahead and open up your chat feature and that will uh, be how we we're mainly communicating with you tonight. We'll be watching the chat throughout the event and we look forward to hearing what you have to say. You'll also have the option on your bottom Zoom controls to turn on live captioning due to the film having subtitles in English and in Spanish. We'll actually turn them off during the film and then turn them back on for the Q&A portion tonight. Without further ado, I'm going to invite, uh, excuse me, I'm uh, doing some secret Zoom stuff back here. Uh, without further ado, to begin tonight's event, I'd like to introduce Dr. Gabriela Chavarria, Vice President of the Science Division at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. Welcome, Gabby. Thank you so much, Celine. It's wonderful to be here today. Uh, I love our partnership with the Institute, and you know, and I, I treasure every month. And but tonight we have an amazing program, and the film is just beautiful and uh, the Institute and us partner with the Consulate of Mexico here in Denver. So, so thank you to all of you that you know, are participating in this incredible partnership. We are super excited and we have Miguel Angel also joining us. So I, I can't wait for you to, to go through the discussion. And this is you know, one of these times that you know, we see these films and you know, what better than to have, you know, people uh, in the discussion, in the conversation. So I can't wait. I have so many questions and I hope Celine let me ask some of them. Uh, but anyway, I just, you know, welcome you all. Thank you for joining us tonight and every month uh, because we always have these very special programs uh, for you. And now I would like to invite uh, Danielle Sewell from the Denver American Indian Commission to say some words. Welcome, Danielle. Thank you very much. I'm um, Petuashde Mitakuyapi, Danielle Seawalker, Imachiapi, Mahung Papa Lakota, Nastanding Rock Sioux Tribe, Imahata, Denver, Colorado, Elwati. Good evening, everybody. My name is Danielle Seawalker, and I am Papa Lakota from the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe, and I'm also the co chair of the Denver American Indian Commission here in Denver, Colorado. Um, I'm very, very grateful to be here to welcome you all on behalf of the commission. We are co-sponsor of the Indigenous Film Festival series that is put on monthly. Um, we really miss it being live and in person at the museum, but we're so grateful that we've been able to make, it, make this accessible to people worldwide even um, by hosting it virtually over the past year or so. Um, we're just really grateful that we're able to uh, have a platform and a way to uh, bring these indigenous films, voices, storytelling to our community. Um, and I welcome everybody for being here. Thank you very much. And I'll pass it on to Jean Rubin. I work at the International Institute for Indigenous Resource Management as general counsel and as director of our Indigenous Film and Arts Festival. With me is Murph Tano. He's president of the Institute and also is a commissioner on the Denver American Indian Commission. Welcome to the program. Glad you could all join us. I will start with some thank yous. First to the Denver Museum of Nature and Science and to the Denver American Indian Commission. We could not ask for two better organizations to partner with us to pre present this Indigenous film series. And next, a thank you to the sponsors who helped make this possible, our series sponsor for the year, Mile High Behavioral Healthcare, and our media sponsor, Kuvo Jazz Radio. As you saw on the slide that opened the program, tonight's program is co-sponsored by the Consulate General of Mexico in Denver, a Mexid, their cultural office in Mexico, and the Mexican Cultural Center that provided promotional support. You know, just this morning, Merv and I were talking about the fact 
that practically everything we do at the Institute is founded on relationships. And that's true for tonight's program as well. Our connection to the Mexican consulate goes back many years. And it was actually through the consulate that we became aware of tonight's film. And it was the consulate that connected us up with the producer who's going to lead our discussion tonight. So it is with many thanks and much pleasure that I will introduce you to Deputy Consul Federico Bas, who is joining us tonight to offer a few words on behalf of the consulate. Federico was born in Monclova, Coahuila. He has a Bachelor of Arts in International Affairs from the Monterey Institute of Technology and Higher Studies and a Master of Arts in International Affairs from Columbia University. He has been a career member of the Mexican Foreign Service since 2005, serving as press attache and consul for political, economic, and cultural affairs at the Consulate of Mexico in San Bernardino, California. He was then director for economic and community affairs at the Institute of Mexicans Abroad. And from 2013 to July of 2017, he worked at the Directorate General for Europe where he was director for Balkanic, Caucasian, Central, and Eastern European countries. And much to our delight, in July of 2017, he came to Denver to serve as Deputy Consul of Mexico in Denver. Uh, Federico is married to Marcela Flores de la Peña. She's joining us tonight. She has graciously offered to um, serve as language translator uh, as we need it. So thank you, Marcella. She'll be joining us after the film. So I will uh, turn the mic over to you, Federico. Thank you, Jan, very much. On behalf of uh, the Consul General of Mexico, Ambassador Berenice Randon Talavera, it's my pleasure to be here today and to, give, uh, to wish you a very good evening. Um, the Consulate General of Mexico is honored to participate again in the Indigenous Film and Arts Festival and partner one more time with the International Institute for Indigenous Resource Management, the Denver Museum of Nature and Science, and the American Indian Commission. I also would like to recognize the Mexican Cultural Center for promotional support, and of course, the sponsors of this event, the series sponsor, Mile High Behavioral Healthcare, and the media sponsor, K-U-V-O Jazz. On behalf of the Mexican Agency of International Cooperation for Development and the Executive Office of Cultural Diplomacy of the Secretariat of Foreign Relations of Mexico, we are pleased to bring today Tlaquimiloli, Voices from the Loom, a documentary about Mexican indigenous women who have sustained for several generations the fine art of weaving with back strap looms. This project was developed in a Nahuatl speaking indigenous region located in the mountain range of Songolica, Veracruz, on the coast of the Gulf of Mexico, where conditions of high marginalization and poverty are unfortunately found. Here, backstrap weaving has played a central role in communal, ritual, an identity life way before the arrival of the Spanish conquistadors. This work is mostly carried out by women using local sheep wool and natural dyes obtained from the forest. This entire process is carried out in an artisan way from obtaining the fleeces to making the, gar the garments. The proposal of this documentary was born from a very particular pro problem. At present, textile art is experiencing a very serious crisis caused by low profitability and the limited trade in these kind of products. Furthermore, to those factors, we need to add the discrimination that unfortunately persists against indigenous people in general and to women in particular. The constant destruction of the forest from which raw materials are obtained as well as the growing number of people from the region who no longer teach the Nahuatl language or culture to their sons and daughters further obscure 
the panorama for indigenous art. With this initiative, we are interested in making visible the active role of women in maintaining their culture as producers of cultural goods in which their particular vision of the universe and aesthetics are expressed and through which they give continuity to a practice of millenary origin in serious danger of disappearing. It, is, it also intends to face anonymity by disseminating the stories and experience of the Nahua weavers in order for a white public to know and appreciate their work, generating thus awareness about the importance of indigenous female art and the need to preserve, strengthen, and spread it. We invite you to enjoy it, to enjoy today's documentary, and furthermore, to share it with your family, with your friends, with the general public. This film is public and free, and you can find it also online. It is also an honor to have with us today the coordinator of this project, Miguel Angel Sosma, whom we have invited to share with us more details of this wonderful work of his, and who will kindly ask, uh, answer all your questions after the film. Thank you very much, Jan. I get back to you. Thank you, Federico. Uh, we have asked um, the producer, Miguel, to uh, just say a few words of introduction. Then we will go to uh, the film, which runs 30 minutes. And after the film, as always, um, we'll have a discussion. Uh, Miguel will lead discussion. And of course, as audience members, you can type your questions into the chat room. So I give you Miguel Angel Sosme. Hola, ¿qué tal? Sorry, uh, it's okay, the, the sound? Yes. Okay, thank you so much for, to all the people that have organized this beautiful program. Uh, as you can uh, see and read, uh, this beautiful short film is about indigenous women in one of the regions with poverty in Mexico. Uh, for us, have been really important uh, to promote the textile tradition uh, because we consider that it's necessary. Uh, it, well, we consider that mar la marginación and poverty is a big problem between uh, women that is dedicated to textile tradition. So with this short film, we, we wish that all the people around the world can know more about uh, this uh, tradition because if we don't share these knowledges, uh, the textile tradition can die in Mexico and specific in this region, a region with poverty where discrimination is a big problem. So we hope you can enjoy this, this short film and you can know something about uh, the beautiful production, textile production of indigenous women in Mexico. So thank you so much for inviting me uh, and I hope you can enjoy this, this beautiful material. Thank you. Uh, we'll roll the film and we'll be back in 30 minutes. Makochi pitenzi, mano coste capitelonzi, makochi cochi, no shopoyo, mano coste cano shopoyozi, mano coste cano pitelonzi. Pues si no, 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 Chicaba chocat con el show, que te iban y con el un cuento. Que todo momento te que ni no no catcan noche que ya y ve que eso catca si psique. Pues en este entonces en que todo que o que se oye chicate, 
Bueno, que popochen que no son simples, bueno, que quien tiene que ser. Y bueno, que tienen que más que cuidar de la niña. Y bueno, sí, que se espocaba tu noche ni son simples, que se apoya un muchachico. Es que todo como pensaron, tu nanzo, que tu quien chivas. Tú sabes que no va a tener ni señor que estoy en San José. Tú que no va a tener que leer este matismate. Te chivilice en un malacate. Y van a tener que chivilice que no es plano. No es mejor ni que quites ese chute ni que sabes. Y van a tener que quites y van a tener que llevarlo a los otros. A ver qué tal que estás que chamo o que pescabites. O pescaban en el cibatzinle. Y van, no puedo que yo casi te se volan a hacer la torre en el nicho. Y que chen chuchal. Pues si no hay la machila, ya yo que seguir, o tal vez cuando la gente hay, o que hay. Y van, no, te que pan no vaya. Y van, y no, no, yo no te que diga, y no hay la machila, es la tonante. Ah, ah, De 12 años, vos te has lizado en los manos, no es triste porque ya es Juan Nisco no está guay. Bueno, de 15 años, de 14, ya vos te has lizado. No, no es nada, pues, como me sigue diciendo, no me más te amo, ni pues que ni el cabo. No es nada, no es nada, te se no come. No es nada, te amo, no es nada, 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 no es nada. Y no, tú has que tú has la machilas, te has hecho más triste que ganaste más la que es chivil. Estaba y van allá de que no hay pan no se empalizó el que estaba y a ti que te han tenido que más popular y que más te te ve pues en tu la en que impacte más que más te van a tener amo cual te pasamos a un cacho de quien se vertía. No vaya de un mucho de que fue su techo más que toma más mala que te mande tan que choca. Mate, que no, las tres igual, no, 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 pues pues ah ya como que no queremos tres que pues por ya como ya gas que en cada tercer día no que está chiva ya como ya
Nikemoto Nikemoti Nitsubito Ni cananenes ni chipaban, son mis liban ni pochinas. En paz de Cayetán con ni pochin, compañani ni malacabes. Y no ni malacabes, que tal. Este en el sábado en Nilo, en Ikpatacachpizao, para hacer este Nichio Spayo. Me hubiese que estar en Nilo, con Tefanto Trabajo. Van Tefan en el trabajo, vamos a por seis años. Sirviro con hace cinco años. Tienen ya sirviro hasta de 30, de 60 años. Ya me partido hasta aquí en Camocobi y con Eva y Shviva, no Chicago Paroske. Usted va a tener que ir para no igual, porque te va a tener que ir a la gente que va a tener que ir a la gente que va a tener que ir a la gente que va a tener que ir a la gente que va a tener que ir a la gente que va a y que este plantas naturales de Nican de Ictocha, en este y no sé qué más aprovechar o cuando cate este cuando mero shortlas porque luego este San Panoa tiempo este y ni toca ni a Molen Shewit igual y la que lo chisigua y ni que mochiwa este yo ni ni no cual se está pintando igual que tema que color rosado igual. Ni can na mechon ni te tiste sinin, pachli yo en este tejuan tik tik chiwa pintura tik apachua iwa ini color cafecito kis iwan tos yo ni ni tejuan ni te pintaro iwa oxe ini na mechon ni te tiste oxe ini que le hasta pachua ini amarillo kis a color y un tejo ahí que se la pintaron. Y un tejo ahí que se la pintaron. Se que le hago esta coche. Y un anaranjado aquí, ese color. Y un tejo ahí que se la pintaron. Pues si no, nosotros de abuelitas, pues ya vas a ni capaz lo amarillo, o te pintaron guaya. Y vas a no guarda que se capacitadora de alemanes, o te hace capacitar ojo. Y un en el que plantito se opa y se la pintaron. Hay que ir a la iglesia de la iglesia. Entonces, sí que no nos chote. O te tlalcas toca. Pero quizá con el teléfono que no te aspinome. Ni meiki, ni galapa. O te tlalcas o te tlalcas que ma. Ma ica, ma que yo le tu se mate ya pa. Pues todavía que se no, que no amigas en el no no te. O ni que le manejo más que ni la llave. Cuando este o o va la fe un cedeí un echelito va. Te te la más chiquita porque poso como más. Primero te tornía este ni casa camelola va un este blanco para para este a trompa a cochinapa mezcla. Pues no es parte porque ni que, que me abuelo lo vaya a mí, que se va a mí, 
pues te don no te mata para vivir en agua, te mata para vivir en agua, pues en monte que pan no vaya, pues que te muevan aquí una batía, este, ven plantas que te mos que como ya no quieres más que haya. En Puachas, para el Nartal, iban inimones, ¿no? Que cuando hay los estados antes, iban todos los inimones, que me tengo que ir a otro chiquito, que me, y casi este, se la pintaron. Y ni tocan este palo campeche. Este, en quizá pinturas de morado. Podemos ver que no iban a espalar, porque no sé si hay que Y el no señor que te moto este chingo que te moto en este pasle, pasle de ocot y van de, de este abre. Ay, yo no te había con otra ya paya, entonces me quedé un poquito a un chivas porque un poquito ya obi. Nikita pues a mí que chivas ni que ya pues cate no te hago manejar para la vida ni que me cate ni que pero van un poco chicate que van y por política un poco política y como que hago que se va y las otras la ya para pues ya no ya no can ani ani chicata hace cuatro cinco cinco cajete
fue lista que me imagino para tercer la mente. Ya, la lumbre. Ya. Es un ya, platicamos aquí. Pues casi igual, sí, igual. Pero ni gan negas, no sé qué tengo por de ni gas, pero así que voy, pues si es que me quito para lo Brasil y no sé, igual va. Chichi. Y va a sacarle, pero me ha dado su capa lo de pozoneque, después de pozoneque. Chichi. Por eso con el whisky verde. Tiene igual este palo vacío, nada más con instalar el carbonato para ovipar. Y acá es que se pone a con instalar el o que se está montando pero igual cuarto. No me bien. Nani, yo te tengo que. O por ti, yo te tengo que. Tal que yo y todo. O por ya te quieres que ya no existe para que pis ni te mega yo. Nini te tengo que para Ekpal, para el Pigal, iban para Payo, iban para Manga, iban para Chaleco. No chis con no más me pasa la medida. Me pasa la letra, la letra este, se bolsa, más sí. La letra se payo, más que este. Ah, no, 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 o ya está. No sé qué pita, también que ni ni toca. Me cae, me pita para no. Es chiste que se rebosa, payo, que le dan teguita o que si vayan, abuelita, así que le van de campos, no es que tienen chío, tienen y que se las cocos, que para mamá, coco en necos, que para que no se quede la leche, no se quede para aquí. Va a ir en posición en que tener otro permate, monene cual. Tienen el caja azul para ir en canil. Tienen tenesti con es con lo que está aquí el tenichkatsi. Tienen chichilti para ir en one, ya para ir en cochinilla. Antes, además, yo dije que me, antes tu abuelita se con los piayas y ellos van a ir no no vienes ni allá. Pues si no, pues no es amo ni me piayas con la mamá ni que vas a morir, o no abuelita con el morpico, los que vas a salir en soya, te van a ir a morir, pero amo que pues, no es pues, ni allá, pues están, pero por de ahí que para que con lo que chivo allá. No es una mamá que tuvo sochet. En el sochet. Y van a cata de copsecinte que tomen la vida. Y vayan a ver gorstic. Gorstic para ya chiquitse. Nen es una vuelta en el papel. Y vayan a ver si no digan que vean. Igual ni que no vean que le ha chicabachi. Y en igual chicabachi no que vean. Y vayan a que le ha de botón. Ni que se o que vea, ni que no vea, se acaba de ni que no vea, de botón, negro, y que no vea, anil. Nes de que no vea, bueno, 
Son muchos que y con el tocan el teléfono y con 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 el teléfono los negros. Pues si que no, pues que yo ni ya te me ayudaron, o sea, tantito. Canete que te como cobre, te estoy cocinando, te has faltado, o ahí. Que hasta asca, no es con. O que te catees más todo que chihuahua, pero que jamás te quieren de mac. Igual, pues asca mejor. Te quieren chihuahua que chique a mí me. Parece que te quitas o cachas te quieren de mac, hasta si yo ni te quieren chihuahua cuando te quieren estar chupitado, o exposición te hago. Pues sí, me ha cajado mi hija, pero que cuando se sentiste de cada sonido de gente, eso es me ha cajado. Ya vi que realmente con todo mi cabo de vida, las piernas o espíritu de vida, todo mi cabo de vida. De hecho, todo mi cabo de vida, con el pollo, con el café, ni con según cuidado, con el segundo panel, 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 con Así que tú vaya, y que yo te que tú vaya, y que te guila, y que esté el guac. Sí, a ti no me que no me la que no me la que que no me la que no la que 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 Papá, o que tengo el día este, de aquí, para este, Italia, que mi niño ni que me voy a explicar que para, para que te que pleno trabajo en ti. O que se me voy a explicar que para, para Alemania. Bueno, no es parte porque, o oh, vaya, que, que igualita mía que de Ipal, de en ser que chiva, por donde vía. Um, pa este México, pues amo ni mago, amo ni mago porque ni con una carro ni un pan ni mateca ni así, más que pues amo, amo, amo de invitación. De veras, ciertamente que este ni que me da, más ni que indica, más que tan en Macate, más que es matica, más si que me está come, pues que es mate, vaya, a mí es mate que. Para que me mague, para quizás que amo que no que quizás que sin agua, que amo, amo que no que la cobas que iban, amo que no que quizás que la anima catilla, sé que quitaba que carro que en chivo le daño, sé que quitaba amo que en chivo, amo que en cabalear en la cava, sé que por el moqueta por el coneva, pues amo cual que ya que la anima catilla. Y van a ser que en gente, ah, no tiene que quizás que, como que, que tía miedo, más bien. 
Os caninos, tomates, tanto os objetivos, quem que tive, os quadros, quando não tinha secas, como que segue isso, seja. Pero es un niquito que chipa tiene en la escuela, mutia que que chute mucho tique te chiva y que te mutla macateca te nasca te que empale bien tu coneva, tu chiva, o te van canaste chuncot con planes de tomito y tomo paco vía y no ni me chile política mientras no le todo ni canifica tu canisla machiles no 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 la pobre no con esto pues canen que no te mucho que no nada mucho pis que tu maestro tanto mamá va a pech mucho te haya mate mate la chivaca Mano con seca, no choco de ti. Mano con seca, no pite lo que. No coche, coche. No te entiendo. Mano con seca, pite lo que. Mano con seca, no choco de ti. No coche, coche. Pite lo que. Miguel, thank you so much for this wonderful film. It's, it's informative and it's interesting, but the production quality is beautiful as well. It's just gorgeous to watch. To, to get started, um, could you to tell our audience how you came to be connected to this community? I know you worked there for eight years, but how did, how did you um, originally get connected? Is Miguel? Like Miguel may have frozen. Miguel, si me puedes escuchar, puedes apagar tu video y lo, volver a aprenderlo, a ver si te ayuda y si no puedes salirte de la llamada y volver a entrar. Sorry, everybody. It looks like uh, our filmmaker is frozen at the moment. Okay. So while Celine is working on that, um, somebody had uh, typed in a question wanting to know where the this program would be uh, posted. So Miguel has great graciously let us record the entire program, the introduction, the film itself, and our discussion. So it will be posted on the Museum of Nature and Science website. Um, the consulate will be posting it, and our institute will be posting it. So you'll have opportunities to uh, see it. And then, of course, I've also put that in the chat. Uh, so you have two links. The first link is for the original Vimeo, which is how they've been re um, distributing the video itself. And the second one is for uh, the U museum's YouTube account. And as always, you can find our programs about a week after uh, posted on the accounts. And it looks like we still don't have Miguel back. Okay. So at some point, um... I'll ask Celine to type my email into the chat room. You can always email me if you would like to get on the list to get announcements about our upcoming field programs, but I will also be sending out an email letting folks know 
when the program is posted. So uh, that's that's another option for finding out when you can see it. The other thing that we'll put in the chat room, uh, Miguel wrote a lovely children's book that tells the story of raising the sheep and shearing the sheep and all of the um, the the shearing, the carding, the spinning of the wool, and it, it's it's just beautiful. Um, it's free. It's an online book. You can download it if you want, or you can just read it online. But uh, very, you know, very nice rendition of the story, uh, suitable for children. And that link is in the chat. And it looks like we have Miguel back. Uh -huh. Welcome back, Miguel. Sorry, I, I, my computer died, but I can't uh, connect again. Everything is okay. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Welcome back. So I wanted to, um, I don't know if you even heard my, my first question. Um, I know you worked in the community for eight years. Can you tell our audience how you came to this project and came to know about the community and uh, how this all started? And when I arrived to this region, uh, amazing because poverty and marginalization and discrimination was a topic interesting for me because. Uh, in Mexico, it's common that people in the big cities uh, used to, for example, when artisans, indigenous women go to the cities to offer to sell uh, their uh, handicrafts, uh, one question common to, to, to give to these women is, ¿cuánto es lo menos? Uh, it's a way to say, uh, well, I, I, in Spanish, is cuánto es lo menos? En español es regateo, perdón, regateo. ¿Cómo podemos traducirlo, eh, Marcela? Oh, uh, yeah, it's like bargaining for the price. So it's just trying to pay less for anything. Mm. Yes, it's correct. And I think that is a big problem because people in the cities don't know how is made all this beautiful art artwork. Uh, so uh, for me, when I was a student, I, I identified this problem and for me it was important uh, to write and research about this uh, condition problem in Mexico, in, in my country. And I could say that the project started in this way, uh, seeing the poverty in these communities and thinking it's not possible to continue with these kind of actions from uh, big cities to women in the countryside. So for me, it was important to, to, to develop uh, a research about these, these problems, about uh, racism. Uh, racism is correct? Racism? Yeah, uh -huh. racism. Uh -huh. Racism and um, gender discrimination because the textile tradition is a, a tradition of, uh, that, that make uh, the women, poor indigenous women. So I could say uh, the interest started in this way, visiting this region and thinking that it's not possible to continue with these practices in, in, our, con in our country. Thank you. Uh, what I found very interesting in the film is uh, when it, it talks about how part of the tradition was lost, the, the part of the tradition of natural dyeing of the wool. And I wonder if you could tell us how you learned about that and who still had the knowledge, because there's a reference to a woman coming over from Germany um, 
so I was curious to know who had the knowledge and how that knowledge got reintroduced to the community. And was it the driving force from outside the community or was the community reaching out to people who still had the knowledge? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. Uh, well, uh, text and tradition never died completely in this region. But uh, we can say that, uh, voy a contestar en español, uh, because it's a little bit difficult to explain it in English. Uh, en, el, en México siempre se utilizaron en las regiones indígenas dos tintes que eran tradicionales. Uh, Marcel. Sí, puede seguir, Miguel. Uh, si quieres, yo te, uh, cuando sea conveniente, interrumpo. Uh, okay. Y puedo empezar a traducir lo que ya dijiste. So in Mexico, traditionally, there were like two uh, dyes that were very commonly used for in the indigenous communities. Yes. Eh, entonces, eh, en otras regiones del mundo se emplean más tintes, no solamente estos dos tintes que en México llamamos añil y grana cochinilla. Entonces, en la región siempre se utilizaron estos tintes, siempre hubo tinción, pero de Alemania vino la capacitadora que enseñó a utilizar otros tintes nuevos a partir de la exploración de las plantas y las flores locales. Uh, so traditionally in this region of Mexico, uh, two dyes were very commonly used, uh, the indigo, añil, and the cochinilla. So these were like the two most common ones, but there was a person that traveled from Germany and helped um, these ladies to have a more variety of, of dyes. So she showed them how to find in plants that were endemic to the region, uh, many other colors uh, using plants um, and just letting them know how to manipulate them to get more colors. Yes, so, so the textile tradition was increased with all new knowledges but the tradition of dyeing uh, indigo and cochineal uh, was common no, in many regions of Mexico. So we can say that no precisamente eh, estaba muriendo, sino que más bien eh, las personas extranjeras apoyaron para que se descubrieran más tintes en la región. And so basically, uh, tradition never died. Uh, what happened is that people get from other countries uh, just wanted to support these groups and just um, help them um, be more creative, like finding more dyes. But the tradition was always there, yeah. mostly with the añil and the cochinilla. Thank you. Uh, we have a question. Uh, Someone would, would like you to explain uh, the meaning of Flaki Miloli and why that's the title of the film. Yes, it's a so, so hard, complex question. Flaki Miloli is a name in Nahuatl. Uh, then the, the meaning is maybe like textile, like tela. Or in Espanol, in Spanish is lienzo is a textile, but it's not a common textile. It's a un textil sagrado. Um, how do you say? Uh, uh, okay, so Miguel Angel is telling us like, there is like a complex meaning to this word. So he would say it's like a sacred fabric or a sacred canvas where you can do things. So the, the most important part here is that it's a sacred piece. Yes, that's right. So it's it's a textile a textile that was used by uh, Aztec people, now a pre-Columbian people, and they they used to use this textile to involve some uh, reliquias, uh, 
sacred things. So when I was thinking about uh, the name of this, this, this short film, we asked two women, uh, what's the name of a text, sacred, sacred textile? And we ask if they have a, a textile that consider important and, and women tell us, yes, it's the textile that we use to involve to, to little Jesus, Jesus Christ in Merry Christmas, or, well, sorry, in Christmas. Uh, so for their, for this, their, no, sorry, for them, uh, the sacred textile was the textile who involved to little Jesus. Uh, so for me it was interesting because the notion about sacred uh, was continued, but now with uh, Catholic uh, vision. So you can watch in this short film, the Virgen de Guadalupe, Virgen Maria, San Jose, San Joseph, uh, and you can hear about this uh, story about the origin of textile tradition with Tonantzin or Guadalupe, Virgen de Guadalupe. So for us, it was really important to share to the people that this vision about the textile, like sacred uh, job, continues in this, uh, in this region with these uh, women. So so the meaning is, is a textile, sac sacred textile, and we decide to use this name for this short film. Thank you. Thank so, you. Uh, oh, Marcel, were you gonna add something? No, 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 he did it pretty well. <laughs> I'm, I'm so no, I'm not adding anything. Um, Gabriella, who uh, did our initial welcome, has typed in a, a, a a comment and a question that I'm going to read because I know um, a big part of this uh, project had to do with giving women visibility and empowerment. And her question really um, ties in with that. She says, thank you for paying tribute to the incredible women that have been weaving for generations and from creating awareness about the triple discrimination they continue to suffer for being women, being poor, and being indigenous. And here's her question. Do you think awareness of the film will help build momentum to help protect the women and their art? Sorry, it's a question for, for, for who? For you. Do you think, will awareness of the film help build yeah. momentum to help protect the women and their art? Yes. Uh, well, when I when I wrote the 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 book, well, this is the short film. But after, before I wrote a book about uh, textile tradition in this region, and one topic important for me was the trip the the three triple dis discrimination for gender, a class, and and what what where is the other the, the social condition. Uh, so I consider that is short film and the support that have, have received indigenous women from the gover Mexican government have been fundamental for uh, getting incomes. Uh, well, with this job, uh, indigenous women can uh, or get some incomes this, this is an important topic because it's a poor region. So promotion has been fundamental. So the textile tradition have been an important role in empowerment for these women because they were people uh, ignored, ignored by Mexican society. So with this short film, they can be, se vuelven visibles. People around the world can uh, watch uh, their, their art job, their traditions. So I consider is him, this job has been important for the empowerment process. 
of indigenous women in, in, in Veracruz and in Mexico and Latin America. So I can talk about the el papel transformador que tiene el arte. The art uh, have a special power for uh, transform uh, social structures and ideas about people. So art is fundamental and art has been a way to survive uh, the culture and the language and at the same time the women's stories. Thank you. Uh, someone wants to know if the geographic isolation has helped preserve the Nahuatl language. And I'll add on to that question. Are these communities speaking only Nahuatl or are they uh, bilingual with Spanish? Yes, these communities are bilingual. As you can see, or as you can watch in this short film, uh, there are different generations. For, him, for example, old women uh, speak only Nahuatl, but when you watch the young people in this, in this short film, you can say there are mixing Spanish and Nahuatl. And it's an important topic because unfortunately for young people, it's not important continue with the culture and language. So now what language is, is y está enfrentando un proceso de declive. Los jóvenes ya no lo quieren hablar. Young people don't want to speak and learn in, in uh, Nahuatl language. So now it's common in this region that the, the bilingual, bilingual uh, the Spanish and, and, and Nahuatl, but for old women is common uh, speak only Nahuatl. So in the part when he said in Spanish, it was uh, he was referring that there is like a downfall, like uh, with the younger generations, they are not willing to learn Nahuatl. Um, so there is like a danger that it might be lost in the new generations. This now what language. Thank you. Uh, somebody was asking if climate change is having an impact on the plants that they're using for the dyes. The plants? Well, es el cambio climático está afectando las condiciones de crecimiento de las plantas endémicas que son utilizadas para hacer las tinturas. Eh, sí, eh, no solo el cambio climático, eh, la deforestación, incluso en el video pueden escuchar los sonidos de las sierras, de las motosierras, y la deforestación es un tema muy importante que afecta a la región, que es una deforestación que en gran medida se debe a la pobreza. Ok, so he says, like, not only climate change, obviously it is affecting the development of the plants that are used to, to dye the textiles, but also deforestation. That deforestation, it's a, uh, a very serious problem. And actually during the film, you can listen to the machines and the saws that are just like um, working there and just um, sawing the trees. And this deforestation is also a byproduct of the economic conditions like poor conditions. So they are just exposed to this kind of activity and they are vulnerable and they can do anything. Someone was asking if um, all the sheep were brought over from Europe or if there was some native species already in the Americas. Can you help me? Pregunta si la, las ovejas, si el, el tipo de oveja o el rebaño que tienen estas personas, si es una especie nacional o si las trajeron de Europa, o sea, si es una especie importada. Sí, son una especie que llegan con la conquista española, pero hay un punto muy interesante y es que después de cinco siglos, las ovejas desarrollaron características propias 
Entonces se habla de que ya son razas locales. Estas ovejas no se van a encontrar en ninguna parte del mundo, inclusive eh, ni siquiera en, en España, que es el lugar del que provienen. Estas ovejas ya no existen en ningún lugar. Tienen sus propias características y desafortunadamente son una raza que está en riesgo porque el pastoreo o la crianza de las ovejas ha disminuido mucho. Uh, he says that actually the original ships that obviously came from uh, the Spanish during the Spanish conquer, conquest, um, but after centuries they have developed uh, different features that can be attributed to the environment they live within. So now it's considered like an endemic um, race uh, with proper features of the region and he says also that they are in danger of extinction because now it's not common that people uh, take care of them. So it's not like a additional activity anymore. So um, they are in an endangered species and that's what, another one of the bad things about poverty and these uh, vulnerable regions in Mexico. Yes, and there are some projects for rescue these, these es, es, estas razas, eh, but it's necessary uh, support from uh, specialists and government for continue with this, eh, con, con la ganadería de, de, y el cuidado de las ovejas. He says like, uh, they're actually working on developing programs to protect these breeds. Um, but it takes a lot of um, commitment and there should be like more uh, initiatives to protect these breeds because if action is not there, we, they will be losing them as an activity um, in the region. So was there a weaving tradition that predated the sheep using um, either uh, plant fibers or, or wool or fur from other animals? Previo a que existiera este tipo de raza de ovejas, había actividad de tejidos usando igual tinturas o algún otro tipo de elementos antes de que llegaran las ovejas? Sí, esta es una región que desde tiempos prehispánicos ha recurrido al tejido. De hecho, este, se han encontrado, bueno, se sabe más bien eh, por los documentos precolombinos, por los códices, que esta región tributaba textiles a los aztecas, por ejemplo, pero se utilizaban textiles de algodón con tintes naturales, no se usaba propiamente la lana de las ovejas pero se utilizaba además una mezcla de algodón con pelos de conejo que, que servía para abrigar en una región tan fría como esta. Yes, uh, there is a very, very old tradition, pre-Hispanic tradition actually, uh, that existed previous to the Spanish conquest. Um, they used uh, cotton and also rabbit hair to weave. So they usually trade these um, products to the Aztecs and um, he says like, it's a very, very old tradition. So it goes beyond and before the, the, the Spanish conquest. So it's a very old tradition there. Yeah, I, I have a question. Uh, the, uh, the work of uh, these, these women are, uh, becoming more valuable as they are being recognized, uh, not only for the craft, but for the art as well. Uh, and as their work becomes more uh, known internationally, it seems to me that becomes a double-edged sword uh, because although it opens up new markets to them, uh, so they're able to uh, uh, perhaps command more uh, money for their, uh, uh, for their work than they uh, had uh, been able to do previously. Uh, it then it opens the door, if you will, to uh, cultural appropriation. Uh, the fact that uh, other people will uh, use the same kinds of designs uh, 
try to create the same kinds of fabrics, et cetera. Are, are there any kind of concerns about, about that kind of uh, 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 theft, if you will, of uh, intellectual and cultural property? Eh, si ¿sí ha habido casos de apropiación cultural. Ah, pregunta que el hecho de que haya más exposición, que obviamente están ganando atención estas tejedoras y están eh, siendo más expuestas al ámbito internacional y hay más interés en lo que hacen y que esto es un arma de doble filo desde su punto de vista que pueden estar ganando más dinero, pero al mismo tiempo sus diseños pueden estar expuestos a lo que se llama apropiación cultural por otras personas y que copien sus diseños. ¿Hay algún tipo de eh, pues preocupación en este respecto? Es lo que él pregunta. Thank you, Marcela. Well, it's not a common condition or situation in this region. It's a, a big problem in another regions of Mexico, for example, Oaxaca. Uh, but in this uh, specific location, it, there is no uh, case of cultural appropriation is the, the, se dice así? The apropiación cultural. Yeah, así se dice, cultural appropriation. Uh -huh. Okay, in this region, there is no a case we have, uh, well, we are, uh, we have a research about this topic and in this region is not, is not uh, a common situation yet but actually uh, in this project we have this uh, esta preocupación porque sabemos que esto podría ocurrir debido justamente a la exposición y a la difusión when uh, I, mm -hmm. uh, so basically uh it's not happening yet but there's like the worry that it might because yeah. well you know like information and being exposed always carries these dangers. Yes. yes. Actually, there is an important point when I uh, talk about these topics with, in the, with the weavers in Songolica, uh, they, they tell me that there is not a big worry uh, about the situation because they really want to share their their knowledge with people because they consider that, well, they told, they told me, if we don't share this knowledge, this knowledge is going to die because a young people uh, don't want to continue learning about this tradition because they consider that is a, a bad job because if you are weaving all your life, uh, you are going to be a poor, a woman, so so it's uh, so sad, but uh, old woman, old women uh, tell me uh, if my uh, daughter is not interested in this tradition, I prefer uh, share share this knowledge with all people uh, in another country or in another city. Uh, it's not important for me. The, the important is sharing. So for me, it was really uh, interesting because uh, for these uh, women, the, more, the, the most important is the knowledge don't die. But of course, it's a pro big problem when you share and there, there are people who is thinking in getting more money no, so we we can see two different ideas and visions about uh, one tradition. No, one people is thinking in sharing, and another people is is thinking in get money. No, so it's a big confusion. <laughs> Uh, just a, I, I'd like to follow up uh, uh, with you on that question. Yeah. Later. Um, a, a few people have asked if there is is a way to support these women by purchasing their textiles. Do they have any um, online outlet, or is that planned? 
Yes, it's it's a, a plan. Well, uh, we have a, a page, Facebook. Uh, on Facebook, the name is Tejedoras de la Sierra de Songolica, Weavers from Sierra de Songolica. And usually we share some photos about garments that they put in sale. And the idea of this project is uh, with COVID-19 contingents, we have been uh, taking photos and post, posting the garments that they put in sale. So if you are interested in one garment, you can visit the page and you can uh, pay with PayPal or transfer bank transfer, transfer bank. And it's possible to get some some garments, specifically uh, ponchos and shawls, rebosos, that is the most common uh, garments in this region. And I did just link that in the chat so everybody um, can access that. My recommendation is any links that we've put in the chat, Go ahead and click on them now so that when we close this, uh, you're able to browse and continue the continue the learning post this program. Speaking of which, Miguel, thank you so very much for being a part of sharing that knowledge with our little scope of the world. Excuse me, our my neighbor's children are finally enjoying the cool air, so they're having a blast behind me. Sorry if you can hear them. Um, but Miguel, muchísimas gracias. Thank you so, so much for being here. Is there any final words that you want to say to everybody before we get going? ¿Quiere decir algunas últimas palabras, Miguel Ángel? Eh, solamente agradecer a todos. Thank you for uh, joining to this uh, event, virtual event. Thank you so much. Uh, you can visit this, this page on Facebook, Tejedoras de la Sierra de Songolica, for uh, supporting the textile tradition in this region. And thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much, Miguel, for not not just sharing um, your time with us now, but letting us um, record the film and share, you know, continue to share the film. We appreciate that. And really, there's so many people to thank for making this wonderful film, this wonderful program happen. Uh, our our ongoing partners, the museum and the American Indian Commission, uh, for being partners in the program, the consulate for making us aware of the film and getting us connected up with Miguel. And they did a lot of the logistical work to make this happen. Uh, Federico for his uh, words of introduction. Gabby for, uh, so nice to see you. We I see your emails in the chat. It's nice to see your, your smiling face on the screen. Uh, Selena is always um, doing a wonderful job hosting us and our our uh, financial sponsor, Mile High Behavioral Healthcare, and our promotional sponsor, uh, Kubo Jazz, the, uh, the consulate and their related entities, um, Amexid and the Mexican Cultural Center. Uh, a big thank you to everyone, and a thank you to everyone in the audience who joins us because, you know, we do it for you. Yeah, those are nice questions. Um, Celine uh, will. Uh, download the transcript and Miguel, we will share it with you. So if anyone had a question that we didn't get to, or there were a lot of uh, wonderful comments thanking you for this beautiful work, uh, we will share all of that with you. So you will not um, miss any of these, these uh, comments that people have written. Gabby, you want the last word? No, uh, thank you. I'm so glad I also am visual. <laughs> um, but Miguel, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, thank you to the Consulate of Mexico for, you know, asking the Institute Jean to show this film, uh, you know, because this was really incredible. Uh, you know, and, and for me, it really touched me at so many different levels. Yeah. So, so I'm just grateful, you know, for the opportunity uh, to be here and to hear you know, the great, like uh, Mara was saying, you know, there were so many great questions on the chat. Well, yes. I'm going to visit the Facebook page and maybe um, on our next uh, Zoom session, you'll see me in a nice new rebozo. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, you can write to the page. <laughs> Thank you.
Well, thank you, Marcella, for uh, for translating for us. No. Yes, thank you, Marcela. <laughs> it's a pleasure. I love it. Thank you so much, Miguel. Thank you. And sorry for my English. <laughs> no. English was perfect, Miguel. What? I also yes. want to apologize on behalf of the museum for the transcript. It did not like the, the going back and forth between English and Spanish. So it was not accurate. We turned it off at the end. It's uh, an AI, so we're going to keep teaching it so that it gets used to uh, this beautiful language and um, the pronunciations that we have. But thank you all once more on behalf of the museum. Again, those questions were absolutely amazing.